with 4 million deaths, lingering disease and millions more, and an estimated loss of $22 trillion through 2025, the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic caused by sars cov two has raised an important question. Where did it come from? It's a question that the world tries to answer since day one, but unfortunately, no one is able to pin down the exact origin of the virus, at least for now. So when the disease first struck Wuhan, scientists suggested that the virus might have a zoonotic origin on the basis that the majority of the cases were exposed to Huanan seafood market where live animals were sold. The word zoonotic means humans contracted the disease from animals, possibly through an intermediate host. It is not unprecedented. The 2003 SARS outbreak happened this way and so did the MERS outbreak in 2012. But some people, after checking the map of Wuhan, decided that they would not be convinced. The Wuhan Institute of Virology, one of the 59 biosafety level 4 labs handling the world's deadliest pathogens, is just kilometers away from the Huanan seafood market. And on top of that, the lab contains a bat coronavirus called ROTG13, which is 96% identical at the whole genome level to SARS-CoV-2. Could it be possible there was people, not nature, that opened the Pandora's box. All of a sudden, Wuhan Institute of Virology became the perfect suspect. However, the lab leak speculation was quickly rejected by most scientists, dismissing it as a conspiracy theory. Just days after the earliest cases were confirmed, Chinese researchers shared the genome data of the virus to the world, and high-profile virologists like Christian Anderson after analysing them, concluded that clearly SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct or purposefully manipulated virus. How did they arrive at the conclusion? By looking at the virus. According to the scientists, several unusual features of the virus suggest that it likely arose from natural processes. For starters, if the virus is indeed man-made, the creator must have used the RNA from the existing coronavirus as a backbone. But in this case, SARS-CoV-2 has a backbone unrecorded in the scientific literature. Creating a virus like this is just beyond human imagination. In order to enter our cells, coronavirus uses a receptor binding domain, RDB, to latch onto the cell surface receptor ACE2. Think of the docking mechanism of space aircrafts. No match, no catch. So if the virus is deliberately engineered to infect humans, it would have its RDB bind perfectly to human cells, right? But it's not the case. Computational analysis predict that the interaction is not ideal and that RDB sequence is different from those shown in SARS-CoV-2 to be optimal for receptor binding, meaning it's more likely that the feature emerged as a result of natural selection. In fact, scientists from both China and Australia find SARS-CoV-2 stocking mechanism actually binds well to Malayan pangolin's receptor, further indicating the virus capability of jumping across the species barrier. Similar investigation happened after the original SARS outbreak. The first cases emerged in November 2002, but the coronavirus wasn't identified until April 2003. By then, authorities already suspected that the animals were involved because more than 30% of the early cases in China's Guangdong province, where the outbreak started, involved workers at a live animal market. A month later, researchers found the virus in civets, and researchers later linked civets to cases of SARS in people. But here's the catch. Even if an animal tests positive, viruses found in saliva, feces or blood are often degraded, making it difficult to sequence the pathogen's whole genome. It took nearly 15 years and extensive animal sampling to find a closely related virus in bats. Scientists actually had to get their hands dirty. They sampled thousands of bats in remote caves in China before finally finding a rich gene pool from one single bat cave in Yunnan province of southwest China with some features sharing 99% similarity to the SARS virus, case finally closed. And the deadly outbreak caused by MERS in the middle of 2002 still doesn't have a clear origin. It took years for the scientists to identify dromedary camels as a host for the virus. And to date, a complete Ebola virus has never been isolated from animals. Tracking the origin of the virus is a serious job. In the case of COVID-19, key arguments for the lab leak theory remain conjectural. But more evidence are emerging suggesting perhaps Wuhan isn't the ground zero of this pandemic. 
a US CDC study of more than 7,000 routine blood donations collected from December 13th, 2019 through January 17th, 2020 revealed the presence of antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 in at least 84 people in nine states. Considering that an antibody response can only be detected two or three weeks after infection, virus could have been spreading in the United States for several weeks before the first officially confirmed case of COVID-19 on January 19th, 2020. Just recently, US Department of Agriculture's own survey finds neutralizing antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 in 40% of samples collected from white-tailed deer from four states. Researchers even detected the antibody in one sample from as early as 2019. Even more compelling evidence of early infection outside of China was found in a skin biopsy obtained in November 2019 from a woman in Milan, Italy, with an inflammatory rash that was found to contain both SARS-CoV-2 viral RNA and proteins. While truth awaits, calls to investigate Chinese labs have reached a fever pitch, especially in the United States. On 6 February 2020, the Trump administration began to investigate the origin of COVID-19 and two months later, US intelligence community concluded that the lab leak theory was inconclusive and believed the coronavirus was not man-made or genetically modified. On 15 January 2021, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo urged WHO to investigate Wuhan Institute of Virology again, citing new evidence that several researchers inside WIV became sick in autumn 2019 only got debunked later there was more likely flu, which WHO team acknowledged, and those researchers all tested negative to COVID-19 antibodies. And now, the Biden administration is trying to solve the mystery once and for all. He tasked the US intelligence community with a mission impossible to find the origin of the pandemic in 90 days. Something in normal circumstances could take scientists decades. Incomplete data and strong opinions does not determine high-impact decisions. The famous virus hunter Ian Lipkin, whose previous works include tracking origins of HIV-AIDS, West Nile encephalitis, SARS, MERS, Luyo, Lhasa, Nipah, Dandenon, Ebola, Marburg, Dengue, Monkeypox, Zika influenza, now signed up for COVID-19. He flew to China, come back writing, animals could have been vectors for carrying SARS-CoV-2 to humans, and warning the United States government not to repeat its mistake. In 2001, one week after 9-11 attack, letters containing anthrax spores were mailed to several people, including senators, killing five people and infecting 17 others. Top US politicians and mainstream media quickly blamed Al-Qaeda for the attack, leading to the Iraq war. However, later investigations showed that they had nothing to do with them. Investigation into the origin of a COVID-19 pandemic should be a matter of serious science. Perhaps it's wise to remember that we are in a virus hunt, not a political witch hunt.